Hey guys, Andy here from Media of Hobbies bringing you the next video as part of the new Ash Wastes playlist. So this time we are going to get one of the beautiful new Nomad miniatures painted up using contrast and a few quick layering. So stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so the Nomad miniature was actually a little bit more complicated to paint than um, some of the other pieces. And I don't mean like it was technically more complicated. I actually just found it quite difficult to break up like the different sections of the miniature. He's got so many different like levels of over overlapping fabric that I really struggled to figure out where one color ended and the next color started. And um, I think that was made a lot easier by the, the, the gracier spray that we used to undercoat the miniature. I honestly think if you were starting this miniature from just a solid coat of black and putting on base coats yourself, you would struggle even further to try and find where one bit of fabric ended and where one stopped and started. Um, what I did, because I was doing the Chieftain, luckily there was the 360 degree on the Games Workshop website, which made it a lot easier to uh, to pick out all the different parts. So the first thing I did was grab the Black Templar Contrast and then do all of the like piping and the face. And he's kind of wearing this like undersuit thing, so gloves and boots and stuff for him black as well. I then jumped over to Agaros Dunes and did, I kindly dressed him from the outside in, so I did the next layer up on the miniature, which was the Agaros Dunes, and he's basically wearing this big kind of dressing gown style thing over the top of all that. Think of like a Tuscan Raider more than anything else. That's kind of what these guys remind me of. Um, and like I said, I had to keep going back to the reference picture and being like, whoa, this bit of fabric is, okay, that should be the Agaros Dunes, and this bit of fabric should be, oh no, that should be that other color. Okay, cool. Um, but once you kind of get the hang of it, like I said, if you do the Chieftain first and follow the 360 on the website, you'll get a feel for, okay, that's that section. So when you do the rest of the squad, it'll be a lot easier. So here's all the Agros Dunes parts um, blocked in on the miniature. I then moved over to Skeleton Horde. And that did the final layer of fabric. So that like bib thing that goes down the entire front of his body. Um, that actually goes down underneath his legs as well as another bit of fabric hanging down which is another bit that's supposed to be the skeleton horde which originally I thought was supposed to be the Agros Dunes um, and then his back banner in the um, the one that they painted is kind of another different color beige but I wasn't in the mood for a third color um, so I did that in skeleton horde as well the back banner you might chose to use that as like your gang color for instance um, to break up the different tribes of nomads. So you may have a different color on that banner. Um, I think that would be really cool. I was tempted to do the same, but for the tutorial, I just kept it as simple as possible. So after all the fabrics were blacked in, it's time to get on to the metallics. So my trusty lead belger, my favorite metallic paint by far. Uh, and I use this to uh, block in any and all of the metallic pieces on this miniature. So this guy has a, uh, a bionic leg. He's got a big gnarly claw thing that's not motorized or anything. You can just see his hands kind of sliding under the big glove, kind of like Freddy Krueger style. It's pretty grim. Um, I would not like to get swiped by that thing. And then obviously he's got his beautiful big chain stave weapon. Um, there's also a big contraption on his back. I've yet to actually read up the lore out of the book. I haven't even cracked the cellophane on the book yet to know whether it's like moisture purification or whether it's air purification or what all of the pipes and, and and tubs. If any of you guys know um, what all the tubes are for, are they for oxygen or are they for water? Please let me know in the comments below. That would help me out a lot. Um, after all the metallics were blocked in, I just had to go back in with the um, Screaming Bell. And then there's just a couple of different bits and pieces that were pictured on their version on the website that uh, were broken up with a bit of brass. So I decided to copy that just to once again break up the different colors. Not have everything be this block of silver. So there were these tanks, um, like basically the one I painted now on the front of them. A few rivets on the chain weapon and then there's a uh, to me they looked up rolled up scrolls on his back like uh but they're not they're obviously some sort of air tank or something and the casings of those was also done in brass like this once all those pieces were done it was time to shade the entire miniature i once again went for serum sepia like i did for the orlock miniature in the first part of this playlist um, two reasons I think it'll look great over all of the different uh, shades, uh, tones of fabrics. And uh, I think it gives that real desert feel to it. And also, if you do the two gangs shaded the same, even if you go in completely different colors with all of their uh, their basics, like the grays and stuff, um, on the other guys, the two gangs will still have a kind of a, a symmetry when it comes to undertones, and they'll sit next to each other on the battlefield really nice. Um, so I really did enjoy that. And I think the shade went on this guy particularly well. Um, while the shade was drying, um, I took the opportunity to uh, 
to base the miniature. Um, I, my own ash waste style desert base thing that I, I, I kind of started doing. I think I'll continue to do for all my other ash waste miniatures. If you guys want to know what that basing skin is, just let me know in the comments below and I'll make a, a really quick um, video on it for you guys. Okay guys, while we wait for this shade to dry, I just want to say thank you for watching the video thus far. I do hope you're enjoying the content on the channel. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you drop a like below. If you have any questions about anything that I am doing in this video or in any video, then please drop in the comments below. I'll get back to each and every one of you guys. And if you see real value in what I do and want to become a, a member of the uh, MH family, um, then there's links to my Patreon below. Thank you guys so much. And Let's get back to painting. Okay, now it's on to um, the layering stage of the miniature. Uh, this is how everything dried. I think it actually looks pretty gnarly like this. And if I was in a rush to get the game uh, to a playable state, I might take all the nomads to this stage right now, play the game like this, be happy out, and then move on later on. So next it's time to pick all the different layers of fabric and start layering them up. So the first thing we're gonna do is rack earth flesh. And I'm going to do it on all of the uh, paler parts. Anything that was skeleton hoard in the first stage of painting um, is going to get layered up with rack art flesh. Um, unlike the applying the, the contrast paint where we just kind of put it on in big blobs and kind of push it around, you want to be much more precise when applying uh, the layer paints. And you basically want to leave all the deep folds on the fabric nice and dark. And any of the raised areas you want to go in with the bright rack art flesh and layer it up. It's very simple. Um, this is what it should look like, hopefully, when the uh, first coat of Rack of Flesh is applied to all of the creamy colors, I guess. I'm not really sure. Then I move over to Zandri Dust. And this is for all the layers of fabric that were Agaros Dunes in the, uh, the first stages of painting. Um, and you're just gonna quickly uh, layer in. Same exact idea. Um, a nice coat over everything. Just leave all the deep recesses on the fabric that nice dark color. Uh, these models were actually quite fun to paint after I got over my existential crisis of where one fabric begins and one uh, fabric ended. And um, they're the gang in the new box set that I am most excited to play with, mainly for the giant flea monsters, which will actually be a video up on the channel um, right after these guys. So uh, look out for that one. But then of course they did show us the beautiful new squat prospectors um, in the reveals the other day. So uh, Ash Waste is starting to look very, very tempting. So once you have uh, layered up all of the different fabrics on your miniature, it should hopefully look something like this. And then we're gonna move on and layer back up the metallic. So we're gonna go back to our trusty lead belcher. I don't wanna go to anything too bright. Again, these are Gaia nomads out in the desert. Um, all of their weapons are going to be, you know, corroded and covered in sand and dirt and stuff like that. I'm sure they take care of them as best they can, but they're not going to be these gleaming, beautiful, you know, artificer level weaponry. They're going to be tools as well as weapons, as if you know what I mean. So quickly go in with a, a kind of a stippled uh, crosshatch kind of thing on the metallics. Exactly the same as the fabric. You don't want to cover in all that serum sepia. You just want on the raised areas um, a touch of silver. I also did it over the screen bell and stuff like that. I also decided to do it on the pipes on the side of his neck, his eye lenses and his mouth grill because in the artwork and on the miniatures they painted, he's got these kind of glowing blue pipes. I don't know whether that's once again to represent moisture is my guess. It's to kind of keep some moisture going in and out of his lungs. Maybe the ash waste is so arid that you know, you, you burn your lungs if you were to breathe in that kind of, um, uh, that kind of heated sand, if you know what I mean. Um, so after I did the metallics on those bits, I could then go over them with contrast. So I threw a Talazar blue contrast over the blue pipes, um, which were the same as the ones they did on their particular, um, the website versions. It turned out really well. I was kind of scared it was going to look really gaudy compared to all of the really natural tones, but it didn't seem to happen. I then moved over to the Blood Angels red contrast to give him his uh, his red eyes, which they seem to be famous for in all of their artwork and all the example miniatures that they painted um, had the red eyes. And after that stage was complete, I called the miniature 
complete. I was quite pleased with the result. I think he does indeed look like a ash waste nomad. I think I've done an okay job of breaking up all the different fabrics. And I personally would be more than happy to deploy a warband to this standard onto the tabletop and play some cool games. So this is the end result. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button below. Um, once again, the algorithm tells me that only about 30% of the people that watch my videos are subscribed. So if you are enjoying my content, you want to continue on with the journey, please do hit that subscribe button and uh, join along. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.